I've wanted to do a driving game for quite some time, so there was a whole load of assets in recent sales that made me able to do that. So here I've thrown together a bunch of those assets and created the very beginnings of my driving game. You drive around in this terrain and you've got to pick up points by destroying fences and race from one point to another. So let's have a look at how I've done it. So in this game, I want to have an endless mode in which the skilled player can drive forever, picking up repair kits and equipment and so on as they go. Later on, as the game matures and I develop the gameplay, I'll design some specific levels that offer a more focused challenge. But since I haven't fully designed the game yet, it's hard to build those levels. So I'm going to start out with the procedural generation of an endless terrain. So inside my dev scenes folder, I've created a terrain scene. But before I get started on actually creating the terrain inside there, there's one more setup task that I want to carry out, and that's to configure Git version control. Even when working alone, it makes a lot of sense to use Git to version control your projects so that you can rewind time when things go horribly wrong. And they probably will at some point, so always use Git. Git isn't the friendliest of tools, it is extremely powerful and quite difficult to learn. It's way outside the scope of this video to teach Git. But here you can see me initializing a Git repo, adding a Git ignore to the project, and ensuring that only my project files are controlled by Git itself. In the terrain dev scene, I'm going to use map magic to procedurally create our endless terrain. If you prefer, you could use a terrain you already own, or you could grab the open source terrain pack that I've linked in the description below. Of course, these won't be endless, but they'll get you going and they'll give you a level. I really like Map Magic, though. It allows you to get going really quickly and then tweak your terrain to your heart's content as you develop the game. But for carefully crafted levels, later on I'm going to use Gaia Pro, which I much prefer for that kind of work. That's for later videos, though. I have another video already on how to use Map Magic. That's linked above. If you need more detail, then check that out. But here you can see on fast time that all you need to do to create a basic terrain is create a map magic graph, drag it into your scene, position the camera. Here I change the clipping plane as well because it's pretty short by default. And then play around with some of the settings. In our map, we want the player to be able to drive around, so we don't want too many cliffs. That's not going to work well. So we're softening the map quite a bit here. Once we have the terrain height map roughed out, we can then start adding textures. Again, Map Magic makes this really easy and its non destructive workflow allows you to just mess about. Now that we have an initial terrain, it's time to take a look around it from the perspective of a player in a vehicle. I'm using NWH Vehicle Physics 2 to provide the vehicles and the controller. You can use any controller that you already have, including the free controller in the Unity Standard Assets package. In order to set up my scene, I'm going to additively open one of the NWH demo scenes and drag in the car I want. It's a big monster truck. We'll also need some of the other components from this scene, namely the rigid body first person controller, that's the player when they're not in a car, the demo UI canvas to provide the various engine and vehicle details on the UI, and the scene manager which controls things like the transition from FPS controller to car controller. Once these are in our scene, we need to place the vehicles and the first person controller in a suitable position. We also need to remove the cars that we didn't bring into the scene from the scene manager. And finally, we need to remove the existing camera since the controllers bring their own. Once that's all done, we can run the game, walk to the car, hit V to enter the vehicle. And now we can drive forever in our endless terrain. The terrain is looking pretty bland. It is endless, but would we really want to drive forever on this? Let's at least add some trees, eh? To do this, we'll use Map Magic objects. While Map Magic 2 that we use to build the terrain is free, objects is not. You can use whatever tools you want to create your terrain, but I like the convenience of Map Magic at this stage of development. However, You'll see in later videos that I also like Gaia Pro a great deal. This allows for much more control over the design of the levels, as I noted earlier on. And Jenna is probably the best solution for design time placement of objects like we're about to do here. So we'll do something on Jenna in a later video too. But for now, Map Magic Objects is going to work great. 
As before, I'm playing the video really fast here. I have another video covering the use of objects and the forest generation that I'm using here. So I'm only going to go through this in very basic detail. If you want more detail, go check out that video. What you can see me doing here is a very basic setup that uses the scatter node to create seed trees and the forest output node connected to the grass textures to ensure that the trees only grow in low areas and are denser where the soil is more fertile. That's indicated by lush grass in our textures. What we have at the end of that is pretty basic, but it's a good start. We will come back to add more variety and remove the completely empty areas that are remaining later on in this series. The trees I'm using here don't have colliders on them, so our car drives straight through them. This is easily fixed. I copy the prefabs that I'm using into my own project, and then I add child objects and put colliders on those that align roughly with the trunks of the trees. Then I make sure that the map magic graph is using those prefabs. And now we have colliders, and when we drive into a tree in the game, we stop. Critically, the vehicle is getting damaged when we hit something with a collider, as you can see by the little red line under the word damage on the bottom right. This is going to be important later on, so remember that. Now that we have trees that will damage the vehicle, we need to add things for the vehicle to destroy and score points with. I'm using 3D Forge Exteriors kit here, but in this video I'm only going to use a single fence model for now. You could use any model you like, even a primitive cube will do the job. Later, we'll add some special configurations of objects that will require the player to perform jumps and other tricks to score points. For now, however, I'm focusing on the basic mechanics, and as such, I'm going to use map magic objects to spawn the fences randomly into the scene. Here, I'm grabbing a fence model from the 3D Forge pack and adding it into the map magic graph. These fences will be placed anywhere except for where there are cliffs. This means the fences will avoid steep slopes. In Map Magic, this can be achieved by using a blend node. You take the background texture as the base and then subtract the two cliff textures from it. What you end up with is a mask that only has the low slopes. To actually place the fences, I use a scatter node with a rarefied node to remove any fences that are too close together. I also use an adjust node to add some random rotation to the fences, keep some variety in there. Finally, we use the mask we created earlier to prevent fences spawning on slopes. However, as we look around, we can see that this isn't quite enough. Some of the hillocks that have grass on them still result in a fence not standing on the ground at both ends. This is easily resolved by adding a slope filter to the mask itself. With a little fine-tuning of the settings, in particular the scatter density, we have something that's easily good enough for this stage of development. Now that we have fences in the scene, I want to score points whenever the player drives into one. Why drive into fences? Well, to be honest, I'm not really sure. I'm focusing on the mechanics here, so I've not really thought through what it is we're going to drive to, but as I mentioned earlier, I can imagine having kind of courses in which the player is challenged to hit fences or other objects. They could just be flags, though. The player has to go between the two flags, like in a fairly traditional game. We'll see how it all plays out. I need to create a script that will detect when the object collider is struck and take an appropriate action. Initially, that action will be to add to the score and destroy the object so it's no longer in the scene. We can call this script collectible. Later, we'll have different kinds of collectibles, which will have different behaviours, but we'll start with just this one. In the collectible script, we have an on-collision method that will handle all of the logic for this item. Initially, I just want to make it log to the console in order to confirm that the fence was hit. Once this is added to the fence, we can create a new prefab and use that prefab in the map magic graph rather than the original fence prefab. That will then automatically update the level so we can jump straight into the game, ram a fence, and sure enough, there is the debug message in the console. To track the score, I add a field to the collectible, which tells it how many points to award when the item is hit. And then I created a game manager object to keep track of the score overall. The game manager should really be a singleton, but here I'm taking a shortcut because I want to just push forward quickly and, and test my ideas. So I left a fix me in the code to remind me to resolve this later. 
You may notice in the video that I've started to use an asset called C Sharp Wizard. This is a free asset in the Unity Asset Store and it's highly recommended. It just makes creating scripts a little easier. It automatically adds namespaces, script defined statements and things like that, just makes it easier. Once the game manager scripts have been created, I add them to a new game object in the scene and the last step, of this segment at least, is to create a copy of the demo UI prefab and add to it a text box to display the score. I put it in the place of the logo that was there before. By attaching this to the game manager, I'm then able to display the score. So now we're ready to hit play, and as you can see, the score is displayed, and when we hit the fence, it disappears and the score increases. Later we'll add some visual and audio effects and so on, but this will do for now. We can keep going. Now that we're able to score points, we need to be able to end the game. One way the game can end is if the car becomes too damaged. So we need to know how much damage is too much. We therefore add a max damage parameter to the game manager. This will have a value between 0 and 1, where 1 represents 100% damage. This will default to 1, but for testing purposes, I'm going to set it down to 0.1, or 10%. In the game manager update method, we check to see if the damage has gone over the max amount, and if it does, we take action. Initially, this will simply be to log that the game is over in the console. Really, this shouldn't be in the update method and checked every frame. Instead, the game manager should subscribe to the damage event on the vehicle, and then we check for excessive damage each time damage is taken. However, in the interest of speed, I've opted to just hack a solution together and put it in the update mode. I've taken a note to refactor this if I keep moving forwards. Why have I done that? Well, this is a fairly common practice of mine. The goal here is to move as quickly as possible and get the game working so that I can have a few people play it and give me feedback, tell me if they like it, and I can decide whether to move on or not. So stopping at this point to review the API for the vehicle package would slow me down. It's just not necessary at this point. This simple solution will work, so let's use it. Next we need a game over screen. For now, we'll just have a canvas with the game over text, and instead of sending a message to the console, we simply show this canvas. Then we'll add in a score to the canvas so that we can show the player how well they did. And there we go. That's it for this week. We have a full play loop. Pretty minimal, admittedly, but this is just a few hours' work, so great stuff. So that's a great start. We've got something that's kind of vaguely playable. Could make it look a lot prettier, could put a lot more engagement into the game, and I probably will at some point. I've already tried this mechanic out in a game jam entry and people kind of liked it, so that's a good sign. And I'm probably gonna use this in my main game, Sewer Zombies, uh, at some point in the not too distant future. So let me know what you'd like to see me do next in the comments below, and maybe I'll pick that up. See you soon.